So welcome back to the Profitable channel. Today we have a slightly longer video than normal and it is our totally free Amazon FBA course. This video is gonna take you through every step of Amazon FBA, setting up your Amazon seller account, sending in your first products, all the settings you need to know about Amazon FBA and all the way to scaling your business. Now all of this is timestamped, so if there's any bit you already know or you're not interested in, please feel free to skip them parts. We don't ask for much in return. Please do just hit that subscribe button. A lot of time and effort has gone into this video. We always read and see all your comments and try to reply to them as well. It is really appreciated, but let's get into it. So what is Amazon FBA? So Amazon FBA stands for Amazon Fulfillment by Amazon. But what actually is this? So it's basically where you send products you've purchased into Amazon's warehouse. They will store them for you. They will advertise them. When you sell them, they will dispatch them to the customer using their prime service. They will deal with all of the customer service and deal with all of the returns as well. So really your only job is actually finding the product and sending them into Amazon's warehouse. Now this has become a hugely popular method over the last few years, just because it's so accessible for everybody. You don't need to have lots of staff. You don't need massive warehouses to store your product. You can literally order your products online. You can take them into your house or your office, and then you can ship them into Amazon and you haven't got to touch them again. They will take care of the rest for you. So what is Amazon FBM? So FBM, that means fulfilled by merchants. Whereas with Amazon FBA, it's being sent out by Amazon. With FBM, you are the merchant. So that means you are sending out the product yourself. So this method is obviously a lot more hands-on. You have to deal with all of the logistics, all of the customer service, all of the returns, and you have to store all of your products as well. It's a much harder method, especially if you are a newer seller. So we've now told you what both FBA and FBM are. Now, as part of this course, we are gonna be focusing on the FBA method, just because we believe it is the most accessible way to get started with selling on Amazon. So next up, we're gonna be moving into the types of Amazon FBA you can be doing. So what is arbitrage? Now the definition of arbitrage is the idea of taking advantage of pricing differences between a website, a retailer, and what it's selling for on Amazon. So we have two main types of arbitrage. We have online arbitrage and we have retail arbitrage. So online arbitrage, this just basically means you're buying the products from online retailers. So it might be Smith's in the UK, it might be from the Walmart's website if you're in the US and so on. Now retail arbitrage, this is where you go out into shops to find a product. So again, you could do it at Walmart's in store or if you're in the UK, it could be Tesco, for example. Online arbitrage is typically a little bit easier because you don't have to leave your house to do it. However, it can be a bit more competitive just because it's more accessible for people whereas with retail arbitrage you can often find better deals which are only available in store however it's obviously a lot harder because you actually have to go out find products and it can be very time consuming with no guarantee of finding any deals now to give you a quick example of what an arbitrage deal actually looks like we're just going to hop onto my screen just here and here we are on the website natino so this is a UK based website, but just to show you the basics of how it works. So we found this Avon Advanced Techniques Ultimate Shine Hair Serum, and we can buy this for £2.50, it's usually £2.70, so we're saving 7%, which is great. Now, if we head over to Amazon, we can see this exact same product selling for £6.25 on Amazon. So we're buying it for £2.50 and it sells for £6.25. So a really nice difference. Now, we obviously need to check it's actually selling and check the data. So this is the Profitable Chrome extension. So we can see this is selling between 61 to 119 units a month and it makes £1.35 profit per unit based on its current price and a return on investment of 50% six FBA sellers. So we just use this just to look over all the data in the course, we'll go through this in more detail about how we actually analyze products. 
So what is wholesale? So wholesale is quite similar to arbitrage in the sense you're buying products and you're selling them online. The main difference is just where you're buying the products from. So whereas with arbitrage, you're buying from retailers, on wholesale, as it sounds, you're actually buying from a wholesaler. So what is a wholesaler? A wholesaler is a company who specifically sells to retailers, whether it's shops, whether it's eBay sellers, whether it's Amazon sellers. And the key here is that it's in bulk. So you're not gonna be buying five, 10, 15 units really like you might be in arbitrage. You're gonna be buying 50, 100, 200, even a thousand units at a time. So of course, this does mean you do need to buy a lot more stock when you would be in arbitrage. You're gonna need a lot more funds behind behind you. Of course, it's more risky because you've got a lot more on the line. If you've invested a few thousand pounds in stock, you can't return that, you have to sell it. Whereas with arbitrage, you do have the opportunity to return it if you do need to. And probably the biggest thing about wholesale is how hard it is to find a good wholesaler. It is incredibly competitive. All of the best ones sell their products super quick. And the not so good ones, you don't really wanna be buying products from anyway, just because you can't really make much money if you are selling on Amazon and buying from them. So what is private label? So the idea of private label is you're buying products which are pre-made and you're putting your own brand on them. So typically you might buy products from China, you'll design a brand, you'll then have to import the products over from China to whether you're selling in the UK, the US or wherever it may be. You're gonna to have to register the barcodes, you're gonna to have to create the listing on Amazon. It's gonna be on you to generate all the sales. So obviously people aren't gonna know about your product. It's not like you're selling on an existing brand, you have to generate the interest in your product. So I'll just show you a quick example of how this might actually work. So here we are on Amazon and we're looking for wireless doorbells. So a lot of these products you see here are gonna be private labels. So it's just people have imported them from China typically and they've put their own brand on it. So you can see loads and loads of different options. Um, and the website most people use is one called Alibaba. So what we do is we search in wireless doorbell on here. And just like that, you can see all these potential options. And look, these look all very similar to what's being sold on Amazon. So all people are doing is buying them in bulk. They might be buying 100, 500, 1,000 units, depending on their situation. They're getting their own brand put on this product and then they're selling it on Amazon as if it is their own product. Now, this is a great method because it means you're not competing against other people on your listing. You have control of your whole listing, whereas with arbitrage and wholesale, there's gonna be lots of competitors on that same product. With private label, you own the brand, so you can basically protect your listing so nobody else can sell on it. Now, the big downside is the cost to this. It is very expensive to do private label. You have to buy samples. You have to import the products, usually from China, so you need sea freight. It's all very expensive to do. With no guarantee, you're gonna make the sales that you hope to make or earn what you hope. Now, if you do pull it off, it is by far the best method and the best way to become truly successful with Amazon but it is very difficult, which is why most people don't start on this method. So we've gone through arbitrage, we've gone through wholesale, we've gone through private label. Now, which one should you pick? Now, for us and what we're gonna be teaching you in this course today, it is gonna be arbitrage. And there is very good reason for that. Most people watching this video will be brand new to Amazon FBA and retail and online arbitrage are by far the most accessible ways to get your FBA journey started. Now, FBA is tough and it is really important just to try and learn the ropes. And that is why we always recommend not to go straight into private label, just because you're gonna make mistakes. Now, wholesale, you can do, but again, you've got a lot more on the line and you need a lot more capital in order to do it. Whereas with arbitrage, you don't need a huge amount of money. You don't need a registered company. You don't need to be back registered if you're in the UK because a lot of wholesalers will want you to be back registered and it's just easily accessible for everybody. So make sure to keep watching this course where we're gonna take you from the very basics all the way up to scaling your business. So as the next part of the course, we're gonna be talking about how much money you actually need to start Amazon FBA using the arbitrage method. Obviously, this is a massive part of it. You will need funds in order to start your business. So I'm just gonna be running you through all the costs involved and how much you actually need to get started with it. You obviously wanna keep your costs down as low 
as possible. And there are some things you can do to do this. So your first cost will be for your Amazon seller account. So you will have to pay to have an Amazon seller account. We do have a free account, which is an individual account, but we recommend to have a professional account. This costs 25 pounds per month plus that, or if you're in the US, it's $39.99 per month. But this is really important to have because it will allow you access to the all important buy box. Now the next part is your software subscription. And we will be talking more about software later in this course and which ones you should be picking but at the minimum we recommend a deal analyzer so if you've watched our videos before this will be the chrome extension or the mobile app where it helps you analyze your fba deals so it's going to give you key data on how much is the product selling what's your profit going to be is there any ip risks the historical pricing graph so you can see if the price is high low and so on this is really important because an fba deal isn't just good because you can buy it for cheap and you can sell it for more there are a lot more parts you need to look at as well now there is another type of software you can use like a deal finder platform this is to help you find deals this isn't as important because you can find deals just yourself but some people do choose to do this just because it can give them inspiration on the types of deals out there when you're first starting it can be really hard to know where to actually look and what you should be looking for here at Profitable, we do actually offer both of these services. So we have our Profitable, which is our deal analyzer, and our deal finder, which, as it sounds, it helps you find deals. Now, our costs for these are £30 for each or £60 for the combined. If you do pick a yearly plan, you do save over 50%. But of course, we do have competitors and there are other platforms you can use, but we are definitely gonna recommend Profitool. We do have a discount code exclusively for those watching this video, which will pop up just here. So make sure to take that down. It will save you either 20% on monthly plans or 5% on yearly plans. But as I say, we will be talking more about the softwares and how they work later on in this course. Now next up is your equipment. So obviously you're gonna be buying the product and you have to do stuff with them. You're gonna to have to package them up. You're gonna to have to print labels. You're gonna to have to send them off into Amazon's warehouse. So there is some equipment you're gonna need. You need things like boxes to send your products in. You're gonna need tape to secure the boxes. You're gonna need labels. You're gonna need a printer, either a normal printer or a label printer. And you're gonna need other equipment like poly bags, some stickers for warnings and so on. Now, if you are doing online arbitrage, you can reduce these costs a bit just because you can send a product into Amazon in the box it came from. And some people may already have a printer. So that's something you're not gonna to have to buy. You're gonna need between 150 to 200 pounds on equipment if you need a printer. And that converts to around 175 to 225 dollars. Now you've got your Amazon seller account, you've got your software and you've got your equipment. You need to buy the product. So how much money are you going to need to buy your products? This does depend on your financial situation. And the more money you can invest, the higher your chance of succeeding quickly. You can obviously reinvest your profits back into the business and expand the number of products you're selling. As we're focusing on the arbitrage method in this course, you don't need huge amounts of funds to get started. You can start with a couple of hundred pounds, a couple of hundred dollars on your first product, buy your first set of products, sell them all, invest all your money back into new products. So between 100 and 300 pounds on your first product should get you going. That converts to about 125 up to $350. So those are your costs for getting set up on Amazon using the arbitrage method. So just to summarize all of them costs for you, we have your Amazon seller account at 30 pounds or $40 a month. We have your deal analyzer at 30 pounds a month up to 60 pounds a month or 35 dollars up to 70 dollars a month we have your equipment at 150 to 200 pounds or 175 dollars up to 225 dollars and then we have your product cost at 100 to 300 pounds or 125 dollars up to 350 dollars the total cost there if we add all of them up is 310 pounds up to 590 pounds or if you're in the us that would be 370 up to 680 so that's how much it will cost you roughly to get started on your Amazon journey. And we gave a range just because it obviously does depend on your situation, whether you've got things like boxes, printers, how much you can afford to spend on stock. So it really can vary from person to person, but as long as you have their bottom figures, you should have no problems at all getting started selling on Amazon. 
So now let's talk about setting up your Amazon seller account because it can be a little bit daunting when setting up your Amazon seller account. It's not as simple as just adding an email, adding a password. There is a lot of information you do need to add. You can have to have a call as well. So let's get into it. First thing to do is head over to this Amazon seller account page and click sign up. And once you've done that, you're going to see this page where you can enter your details. So put your name in, your email and set yourself a password. The next thing you're going to come across is adding your business information. So we're going to be talking about this as if we're in the UK, but it's very similar if you're in the US, Canada, India or wherever it may be. All of this information is interchangeable. You see a few sections on here. So first up is our business location. So obviously we're going to put United Kingdom. Business type, we're gonna set sole proprietor. Now there are a number of options you can pick. So you may have a company, a limited company, or if you're in America, an LLC, which you can put that in here as well. But for most people, you're gonna to need to set up as a sole proprietor. And I'll be talking more about that very shortly. Now next up, we've got the business name used to register with your state or federal government. Now this is just basically what you wanna call your Amazon business. So for me, it might be Joe Sales. It could be absolutely anything. Obviously, as you're selling on Amazon, you are a business and you need some branding. You don't need to stress about it too much to be honest with you and your business name isn't gonna affect your sales at all. Now onto the next step is adding some more business information. So we've got a few things we need to enter here. So first up is your UTR number. So this is your unique taxpayer reference number. In order to sell on Amazon, you do have to be registered as self-employed. You'll need a UTR number. You can apply for this on the government's website. So. You just enter that in here and then you enter your registered business address so for most people this is going to be your home address you're not going to have a warehouse you're not going to have an office at this time just put in your home address in here and then verify your phone number so put in your phone number and you'll get a pin through from amazon just to verify it now next up is your personal information so you're gonna have to put your country of citizenship so for us it's united kingdom your, your country of birth your date of birth your proof of identity so most people use a passport or a driving license and your date of expiry and the country of issue as well. Um, and then in your residential address, so where you live, so your mobile number. Now the next step is your billing information. So this is gonna how Amazon are gonna take their money for their subscription. Just enter in here and then click next. Now next up we have the store information. So you'll see a number of sections here. The first is the store name. So most people just put their business name in here, but you can put something different. Um, if you do prefer. Again, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect sales too much, but just decide what you want to call yourself. You'll see a few yes or no answer questions just here. So first up is, do you have universal product code, UPCs for all your products? So we'll tick the yes for this. So this is just the barcodes. Now, because we're doing arbitrage, or even if you're doing wholesale, you're going to be selling pre-branded products which already have barcodes on. You're not creating the barcodes. So this is why we answer yes to this question. Are you the manufacturer or brand owner? I know you'll be able to see yes on the screen but just tick no for this one again we don't own the big brands now if you're doing private label or selling your own products and obviously you click differently and then finally do you own government registered trademark for the branded products you want to sell on amazon no we don't own the trademark for the products we're selling now the next step will be verifying the information you have submitted amazon's going to require documentation your name your date of birth your identity data a document to identify you this might be a bank statement utility bill something along them lines there's loads to pick from and one additional document and then your business address so once you have submitted this information, your next step is you're going to be able to book your Amazon seller verification call. We're going to have a whole section about that next up, so keep on watching. So we've set up our Amazon seller account and we've been asked to have a seller verification call. And this can seem pretty daunting when you're first starting because you're thinking, oh, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to say something wrong. Well, it's really nothing to be scared of. I'm just going to be running you through what might happen on this call, what to expect and what you need to be doing. So firstly, what is the seller verification call? Something only recently brought in in the last few years. And it's where once you've created your Amazon seller account, you have to have a call with an Amazon agent to verify that your identity matches the identity which you're using on the account. So Amazon introduces mainly to reduce fraud and just reduce the number of people
people not following Amazon's terms and conditions. It reduces the amount of bad people, bad scammers out there. And as long as you're not doing anything like that, you won't have any problems at all. So once you have set up your Amazon seller account, you'll be asked to book a time to have this call and you'll be sent all of the information to book in. Now, before you have the call, there are some things you're gonna just wanna prepare just to ensure it goes as smoothly as possible. So the first thing you want is all of the personal documents you uploaded when you set up your Amazon seller account. So this includes your passport, might be your driving license, a utility bill, a bank statement, anything you use when you actually set up your Amazon seller account. Now you've got all that ready and you're about to go on the call. What is gonna happen on your call? So it's really nothing to be scared of. The Amazon rep will just ask you to identify yourself firstly. And then what they're gonna ask you to do is gonna ask you to hold up your documents against your face. So this will often be your passport. You have to hold up your passport next to your face here so they can just make sure it's a real passport. It is actually you who has uploaded this document. They may also ask you to flick through the pages of your passport just to check it is real. Now the call only usually lasts 15 to 20 minutes but you'll only actually spend five minutes doing anything most of the time it's just waiting for the amazon staff to be uploading the documents to their system or just cross checking things so a lot of the time you will just be sat there in silence and that really is all the call entails it's literally you go on you verify yourself you show them your documents and it is as simple as that now you may be wondering how long does it take to actually get the account proved after this call it really does vary I've heard of times where it's been almost straight away and other times it's taken a few days for you to get the message saying your account has now been fully verified but just be patient and you will hear from Amazon for them to confirm your account is now active. Now we're going to be talking about the Amazon fees and the fees to sell on Amazon. We have briefly explained the Amazon subscription, but there are, of course, other fees involved to sell on Amazon. Just going over the actual Amazon subscription again quickly, you've got two options here, individual and a professional account. We recommend a professional account. This will give you access to the buy box. This costs either £30 a month or $40 a month. You are in the US, but there isn't really much you can do about this, and it is worth paying to get access to all the Amazon Prime customers so the first fee we're going to be talking about is the referral fee so this is a fee you pay on every product you sell on Amazon you pay this whether you're doing FBA fulfillment by Amazon or FBM fulfilled by merchant and it's basically the fee you pay for advertising and selling your product on their platform and this fee is a percentage of the sale cost and ranges depending on the category you're selling on it can be anywhere from about 7.14 percent up to about 16 percent of the sale fee on amazon and there is also a minimum referral fee for the cheaper items so it's going to be either 25p or 30 cents so that's the absolute minimum you can be charged now the next fee we're going to be talking about is the fba fees as you know in this course it's all about fulfillment by amazon so this is where you send your products in and amazon send them out to your customer so of course there is a fee involved with this every time you sell a product they have to send out the product to them this covers all of that cost this does vary depending on the product the size the weight it isn't too high of a cost based on the service you do actually get now the next fees you may come across are called storage fees this is the fee you pay to amazon for storing and keeping your products in amazon's warehouse and this is why you want to sell your products as quickly as possible because you don't want to be spending loads of money on storage fees you want your products in the warehouse and you want them out and sold and again, these can vary depending on the setup. So for hazmat products, if these are like dangerous goods, these are obviously gonna cost you more money because Amazon has to handle them differently to just a normal product. And then you also have long-term storage fees. This is for products which have been stored for more than a year, basically. Now, of course, when you buy products to sell on Amazon, you need to send them into Amazon's warehouse. So you have the shipping into Amazon fees. So usually you use Amazon's partnered shipping, which is UPS. It's very, very reasonable. It's not too expensive. And there's not really much you can do about this one. But you are also given the option of prepping fees. Now, we always advise to do all your prep yourself. So package your items, label your items. You can outsource this to Amazon if you do prefer, but we don't recommend to do it. You want to keep as much profit as you can now there are a few additional fees which you won't come across as often but no doubt you will come across them so the first one of these is the return fee so as it sounds this is for this products which customers return there is a fee involved with this depending on the reason it's being returned a few others which i won't go into much detail are the refund administration fee and the unplanned service fee those are most of the fees involved with selling on amazon so there are quite a variety and it can take a little bit of time to get your head around all of these but once you've been selling a little while it will be as clear as day for 
for you. Just quickly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really does help us out. It allows us to invest more in the profitable channel. And if you have found this course at all useful, please do share it with your friends, family, and anyone else who you think might be interested in learning Amazon FBA. So you have your Amazon seller account set up and now it's the fun part to actually start looking for some products to sell, but you are most likely going to want some sort of software to help you on your journey. And I'm gonna be explaining the options out there, what you can be using. Now, obviously we are a software ourselves, so I will try to be as impartial as possible, but there are two main types of software you might be interested when starting your FBA journey. You have deal analyzing software and you have deal finding software. First up was your deal analyzer, which I have mentioned earlier on. This is to help you analyze your FBA deals. So a FBA deal isn't just good because you're buying it for $10 and you're selling it for $25. There is a lot more behind the scenes which you need to look at to actually work out if it is a good deal. How much is it selling? What's your profit gonna be? Is it gated? How many other FBA sellers are on the listing? How much stock do they have? What's the price been over the last year? And the only way to actually find this out is by using software. So I'm gonna show you exactly how this works on the ProfitTool Chrome extension. This works the same if you're doing retail arbitrage, so you can use an app as well. But we'll have a look at this product on the website Wilco. It's this Easy Grip Beaker, which we can buy for £3. If we head over to Amazon, we can see it sells for £12 and five pence. So on a product like this, we'd load it up on the profit to extension. So here we can see all of the key data for the product firstly. So it's dimensions, it's weight, the brand, the names, how much is it selling? So this one's only selling six to 29 units a month. Not crazy sales at all. How much reviews, obviously we can see that anyway. But we can see here the FBA fee, uh, the referral fee, the VAT from the fee, depending on where you are, your settings and so on. And we've also got options, so uh, for small and light, your return on investment, break even points, estimated profit per unit, the Amazon sales rank, and then we've got things like pricing graphs. You can have a look at this product history, see if Amazon have ever been selling this listing, see if it's at a high price, a low price. It's really interesting because look, we can see the price now is £12.50, but we can see it's actually been as low as £7.49. So if we're selling this for £7.49, then it wouldn't be quite as good. It's still a great deal, but not quite as good, which you may not know if you didn't have software. We can see the number of sellers on the listing, and we can also see how much stock they have. So these four FBA sellers only actually have 11 in stock between them. So that's a really good sign because they're gonna sell out quite quickly. There are bad things which can happen on an FBA deal. Is it an IP risk? So that's an intellectual property risk. So you might get an IP violation on your account, which is really bad. Is it a hazmat item? So is it potentially a dangerous good? chemicals, nail varnish. So you can sell these, you just need to be registered for the dangerous goods program. Is it an oversized item? So are our fees, our storage fees gonna be higher? And are there any variations on this listings? And this is important because things like the reviews, sales rank are gonna be split across all the variations. So it can make a product seem more popular than it actually is. And then loads of other data to look at. So you can look at price averages over the last year, how many sellers there have been, how many reviews it's been getting. If it's available, you've got things like eBay data, so how much it's selling for. Use and combine all of this data to work out if it is a good deal and minimize your risk of making a bad buy. Because what you don't wanna be doing is you don't wanna be buying a product, sending it in, and then you end up having to sell it for a loss. And this is why software is important because you can work all this data out and it will just make you a lot more successful. Now, my impartiality is that you don't have to use a deal analyzer because you can use your Amazon seller account. So you can scan products on there and you can see its price, its sales rank, but that is about as far as it goes. You can't see how much it's selling. You can't have a look at the price history graphs. It obviously won't tell you any warnings about the product. And this is why a lot of people choose to use a deal analyzer, just because it does give you a lot more insights into a product. The next type of software you may be interested in is a deal finding type of software. I'll be showing you on our deal finder today, just so you can see the basics of how it does work. And this is definitely a lot more optional. You don't need to use something like this because you can just find a product yourself but some people do just find it a little bit easier when they're first starting just because you won't really know where you should be looking what you should be looking for and so on so it can just help you find deals or just give you inspiration on types of websites you'd be looking for so here we are on our deal finder and basically what deal finder is is we scrape all of the large retailers in the uk and the us and we're looking for a low price on the source website and a high price on amazon so if a product was 
$10 in Walmart and it's selling on Amazon for $30. That will go into Deal Finder as a potential deal. So it's not a checked deal service. None of the deals are checked. Just because it's on here doesn't mean it's a good deal. It just means that you can buy it for less than it's selling for on Amazon. And the idea is just to save you time having to trawl through lots of different websites. All of these potential deals are put in to one central portal. The way it basically works, so we're on the US one now, so there was there's 13,000 in this last update. We update it twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. So we might head over to the toys and games category. We'd start looking through the products. We can hover over them to see where they're from. So, um, you know, loads and loads of products here, like this one's Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble are typically avoid just because they have loads of products on their website. They say they're available, but you can't actually go through and buy them. So it is quite a pain. But we've come across this product just here. So it's this GI Joe action figure. So this one's from the website Target. Here we can see it, we can buy this for $22.99 and it sells on Amazon for $38.90. So a nice pricing difference there. And obviously there's loads of products like that out there. So your first step when it comes to finding any FBA deal is obviously that it's you can buy it for less than it's selling for on Amazon. And then your next steps are doing your further analysis. But that is definitely a more optional software. The deal analyzer is a lot more important and probably 99% of Amazon sellers do use a deal analyzer where a lot less people do use a deal finder. But when you are first starting, it can just help you a little bit. But as you become experienced, you know where to look. You know what you should be looking for. Now we're halfway through the course. We did just want to let you know about an exclusive YouTube discount code, which you can use to save some money on your profitable subscription. It will save you either 20% on monthly plans, that's forever, or 5% on yearly plans, and they already have 50% off anyway, so it's a massive saving. I'll pop it up just here. We'll put it in the description as well, so make sure to take them down, and if you were interested in joining Profital, it will save you some money on your subscription. So next up, we're gonna be showing you how to find your first FBA deals, and this can seem like a really daunting task when you do start Amazon FBA, because where should you be looking? What should you be looking for? So I'm gonna be running you through some things you can be doing to help you when you're first starting your journey. Learning to find FBA deals is a skill, it is an art, and it takes a lot of time to master. So it's really important not to get disheartened when you're first starting, if it takes you that little bit longer to find your first FBA deal. But as of anything, the more time you spend doing it, the easier it does become. So in this method, we weren't really using any software like our deal finder. We're gonna be doing manual sourcing, and then the sort of thing we would be doing if we're brand new and trying to find our FBA deals. Now, for most people who join our our platform when they ask us how do I do this the thing we recommend is to start off by looking at our deal of the day feature our deal of the day feature is a free feature for all of our members it's where we send in one to two deals Monday to Friday to all of our customers just to give them inspiration on the types of deals out there if you have seen our previous videos you'll probably know about this already but the idea is just to help people show them what's out there any potential sales on any offers on at the moment and that is a big thing about online arbitrage is a lot of the things you're going to be buying are probably going to be sale items there might be an offer on it so three for two on a certain line or 30 percent off a certain line and that's where you can really make good money by focusing on these lines so on the screen now you'll be able to see deal of the day so it's in our discord community and you can see we just send in loads of different products with the links to where you can buy them from and as I always like to remind people we don't recommend to buy any of these deals just because they do get seen by so many people but you'll see deals from the website Boots, Tony and Guy, Claire's Accessories, Campus Gifts, Natino, Home Bargains and a lot of these websites you will know but some of them you probably haven't ever heard of. Ocado which I'm sure you've probably heard of, Natino which is a great website or if you're in the US, you know, we've got Sunny Sports, Webster and Store, I think that is, Zuli, Comic Empire, Barnes and Noble, of course, a popular one. So this would be my first step is learning the websites, having a look at what other types of products are out there. Because once you've got these, you can start to branch off looking for your deals. So I'm gonna be showing you an example on a UK product and it's from the website Boots. So let's just open this up and show you a method of sourcing you can use. The actual sourcing side, the first thing, we're always looking for is, is it selling on Amazon for more than we can buy it for? So we found this one for £7.46 
um, and it sells on Amazon for £17.99. Now that might be a high price now, it might be a low price now, but that's our first thing we wanna be looking for. We're not gonna be wanting to buy this deal just because this deal is gonna be seen by a lot of people. It's probably gonna become quite saturated, but we know that at the moment, Boots obviously have offers on the brand Soap and Glory, and we know that we can sell this, that's great. We're gonna try and find other products by branching off of this, and it's really easy to do. All we have to do is just type in Soap and Glory, and it's gonna bring up all these products, and look, you'll see half price, 30%, 25%, 30%, 30%, 30 save a third, selected um, and there's loads of other products which may potentially be a good deal for us for Amazon FBA so on our search we've come across this is Soap and Glory the Righteous Buster mini 50 milliliters which we can buy for £2.95 but there's actually a deal so it's free for two at the moment so that means one unit would actually only cost us £1.96 now um, I found this exact same product on Amazon for £8.98 so we're buying it for £1.96 and it's selling on Amazon for £8.98 so four times the price, which is amazing. Ideally, when sourcing your FBA deals, you're gonna want about a 50% markup. If you're buying it for five pounds, you want it to be 10 pounds on Amazon. If you buy it for $20, you want it to be $40 on Amazon, for example. And the reason for this is because obviously you have to account for your fees. So you have many fees as you probably know already, and you need to account for this on top of your profit margin. So using the double method, that should give you enough. Now a product like this, we're getting obviously four times. So our profit is gonna be much better, which is brilliant. So using offers is obviously a great way to find FBA deals, but it's not just offer items you'll find. You will just find FBA deals on random items. So this one here is on Asda. For example, it's a shampoo and conditioner. We can buy this for £2.50. Um, we can see on Amazon it sells for £8.50. Now, the key with sourcing is persistence. There isn't any quick way of finding deals. You just have to be persistent and search, search, search. Go through lots of different websites. You will come across FBA deals. You are just gonna have to spend a lot of time doing it. And that is probably the biggest downside about Amazon FBA. And it is the hardest part about Amazon FBA is the amount of time you do have to spend trying to source your FBA deals. So in the next part of the course is all about how to actually analyze your FBA deals. Once you've found a product which looks like a potential deal, there's a lot more behind the scenes you have to look at to work out if it's actually good. It isn't as simple as just you're buying it for cheap and you're selling it for more. There's lots of data we want to be looking at to try and minimize our risk of making a bad buy because you don't wanna be sending products in which don't sell or you send them in and the price drops down so you're selling it for a loss. And this is why it's really important to analyze your products in detail before you buy them. So I've got a couple of products here just to show you some of the things we're gonna be looking out for when analyzing deals. So this one here is from the website Natino and it's this long lasting foundation. We can buy this one for £6.40 with the code brand 20 and it sells on Amazon for £13.49. So of course that is the first thing we want. We wanna be able to buy it for less than we're selling it for. So £6.40, it's selling for £13.49. So let's load it up on the Profitool Chrome extension. And before we do actually analyze it, we of course just wanna check we can sell it, we're not gated. So we just go into our Amazon seller account, add the ASIN into our inventory and check we can sell it. If we can't sell it, we're gated. Later on in this course, we're gonna be talking about how to get ungated. So you can always skip forward to that bit if you want to learn how, it's not difficult, and it really does open up your Amazon FBA, so you'll see that in the timestamp. So we've loaded up the Profitable Chrome extension and we're gonna start going through the data. So always like to just work my way through the data step by step and look for the key things for Amazon FBA deals. So the first thing I always do is I just check the brand of the product it matches the actual brand of the product you're selling. This one here, we can see it says same as on here. Now the reason we do this is because some sellers will create listings on Amazon under their own brand, which aren't actually under their own brand. So they'll, they'll have a copyright for their brand, whatever it may be. And they might list a different branded item under it. You'll have absolutely no idea. You think you can sell this product, but what they're trying to do is they're gonna catch you out and they're gonna report you for an IP violation, which is really, really bad. So this is why we just wanna check the brand of the product. Now next up, we're gonna be checking our sales. So this one is selling 31 to 50 a month but the one thing to notice here is that this is a variation listing there's six variations and this is important because on Amazon listing the reviews the sales rank and the data is going to be split between all of these variations so it's going to make the product look more popular than it actually is we can see this whole listing is selling between 31 to 59 but if we head down here to view the variation sales we can see that this variation actually only gets 14% of the sales 
to five to nine a month. So that might be enough to put you off. Obviously, most products won't be variations, but it's just something else to look out for. Then we're always gonna be having a quick look at the product reviews just to make it sure it's a popular product. We don't wanna be buying products which have low stars, so it's gonna get returned a lot. Now, next up, we're gonna be looking at our profitability. So this one makes us £2.40 on our current buy and sell price with our fees, a return on investment of 36%. So the return on investment is our most important metric. Ideally, we want about 30% as a minimum. The nice thing about arbitrage is you can get way, way higher ones, but 30% is about our minimum. But the important thing here is looking at the price over the last year to see if it's a high price now, see if it's a low price now. So there's a few ways you can do this. You can come down here, you can see the average buy box price. So it's been 14 pounds and 10 pence, um, which is actually more than now over the last year. It doesn't always give the full picture. And this is where the price graphs come into effect. And the price graphs, are gonna be your best friend when it comes to Amazon FBA. So we'll just put these on 365 days. We'll turn off warehouse deals, we'll turn off use, we'll turn off FBM. We'll just be looking at FBA, Amazon and buy box. So firstly, we'll check if Amazon have been selling on it. So it doesn't look like they have been, so that's absolutely great. So we'll turn back on buy box and FBA at the moment and buy box is going to is the most important line we're looking at we can see here the buy box price over last year and the nice thing about this one it has been reasonably stable so it's probably averaged just above 12 pounds 50 and what you want to be avoiding here is you don't want to be buying a product where it's been way cheaper in the past so obviously it's 13 pounds 49 now but if it had been seven pounds in the past then there's a really high chance we're going to get undercut which obviously uh, we want to avoid. We're also gonna be looking for things like suppressed buy boxes on here. This is where Amazon hide the buy box if they deem it's too expensive. So no issues like that on here, which is um, absolutely great. Interestingly, we can see it's not an FBA seller who's got a buy box at the moment, it's actually an FBM seller. So we could be pretty sure if we're selling it for this price, we would definitely get the buy box, which is absolutely great. We also look at the sales rank graph, and this is just to confirm it's selling. So typically the drops in this line indicate sales. Not an exact science, but that's one way of looking at it. You can see that this isn't really a huge seller, so this may put some people off. We'd also look at the offer history. So this is the amount of sellers on the listing to see how many they're using usually are. The most important thing about this is looking to see if loads of sellers have dropped off this, this product. This could mean there's been, been an IP complaint, which again, you really want to um, try and avoid. And then on the product reviews and ratings, you can just again see how popular the product has been performing. Now, once we've checked the graph, we're gonna be checking our competition. So currently there's only one FBA seller on this listing. And that's our main competition, being honest. I know the FBM seller has the buy box at the moment, but we sold this at £13.49. We would definitely get this buy box for sure. Um, so let's see how much stock they have. So there has actually been another one, but they've sold out. Um, so this one seller has 44 in stock. You have to work it out for yourself on this one about how much the product is selling, about your competition. Ideally, you want sort of less than five sellers on a listing and you don't want sellers with loads and loads of stock. So if you see a seller with hundreds in stock, the chances are they're buying it wholesale. So they're gonna be buying it for cheaper than you can buy it for. They've obviously invested a lot more in it. So they're gonna be fighting for the buy box a lot harder. Now next up, we're gonna be checking for any warning. So we've got four warnings to look at, IP risk, hazmat, oversize, and variations. The IP risk, this is what I was talking about earlier. It means intellectual property risk. And if you do see this, please be very careful. These are just warnings on profit tools. It just means you need to do some further checks. Um, but we can see that this one looks safe to sell. Hazmat, this means it's a potentially a dangerous good. Um, so this is often things like uh, chemicals, nail varnish, things which need special handling. You can sell these, you just need to be registered for the dangerous goods program on Amazon. Can't use UPS to send the products in. Again, it just means you need to be do further checks. Oversize just means your fees are going to be higher. Obviously, you're not going to have to worry about it on this one, specifically your storage fees. Um, and then we've got variations, which we've already talked about. So this means that the data can be split across the number of variations on the product. So just something else to bear in mind. Um, and then we've got all the advanced historical data down here. So you can have a look, um, the average prices for different sellers, the number of sellers, the sales rank, how many reviews it's been getting. There's also eBay data down here as well. There's also eBay data on here as well. So this can be 
useful to look to see if it's been selling on eBay, if it's a similar price, if it's more expensive, if it's cheaper. The idea is that you use all of these data points together to decide if it's a good deal. Now, it's really important to note that you're never gonna find an 100% perfect deal. There's gonna be a little something which isn't quite right, but that's just the way it goes. As long as you can minimize your risk of getting undercut or of too many sellers coming on the listing, it puts you in a much stronger position that you're not gonna be making lots of bad buys. So that's the main things we're looking out for when we are analyzing our FBA deals. As with all of FBA, the more time you spend doing it, the easier it does become. You can spot the good and the bad deals really easy. Probably the biggest thing to work on is learning about the price graphs. They provide a real lot of key information which is often overlooked by other sellers and it's where you can gain a bit of an advantage. So you found and analyzed your first FBA deal. You now need to buy it in order for you to send it into Amazon's warehouse. So in this section, I'll just be giving you some hints and tips on what you do need to be doing. Now it isn't too complex on the actual ordering part. It really is as simple as just ordering it to your address. Then you've got the product to send it into Amazon's warehouse. But there are a few things you can be doing and using in order to maximize your profit when buying your FBA product. So the first thing to consider is actually how you pay for your products. And is there anything you can be using in order to earn some extra money or earn some benefits for you? So we always recommend to look at using a card like a American Express, because what that will mean is that you can earn points on every single item you purchase. And as you can imagine with Amazon FBA, you're gonna be spending a lot on products, which means you can get a lot on points and you can use this towards travel, all sorts. Here we are on the website and you can have a look. There's quite a variety of things that you can actually use your points for and it doesn't cost you anything really. You're buying the products anyway, so why not get something back for it? Now we do actually have a referral link for American Express where if you do sign up, you'll get a load of welcome points. So if you were thinking of getting an American Express card, make sure to use that and you'll get some extra points without actually having to spend any money. So the next thing to be doing is to be looking for the discount codes on your purchases. So often websites are gonna have obscure discount codes which you'd have absolutely no idea where to look, how to find them. There are lots of discount code websites out there. We recommend to use a Chrome extension like Honey. What Honey will do is when you are checking out, it's gonna try and find discount codes for your purchases. Now, a lot of the time it won't find any, sometimes it will, and it's totally free. So there's absolutely no reason not to use it. And then the final thing to be looking at using are cashback websites. So you've got websites like Top Cashback or Quidco if you're in the UK. All this actually does is they will give you cashback when you shop through their link. So all that these websites are doing is they are paying top cashback Quidco a cut for referring customers to them and then you are getting some commission. And again, it is totally free to use and it is just a great way of earning some extra profit on your orders. Now we're gonna show you how to send products into Amazon's warehouse. And we do know this can seem daunting for a lot of people when first starting, but it really isn't anything to be scared of. It really is straightforward and nothing to worry about. So the product we're gonna be sending in today is this one we found on the website, The Entertainer. So on our screen, you'll see we're buying this one for 12 pounds and we can sell it on Amazon for 29 pounds. So a nice difference here. So we've ordered a product, we've got it ready to send off, and we're now gonna arrange the shipment to get it into Amazon's warehouse. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we obviously wanna add it to our inventory. So this is the product just here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it into our inventory on Amazon by selecting new and then selecting sell this product. Now you'll see a number of different options here which we'll need to fill out. So the firstly is the SKU. Now this is optional, you don't have to use it. I personally do like to use it. If you're selling quite a variety of products, it just makes it easier to track your stock. So SKU, that stands for stock keeping unit. So it's to help companies track their stock levels. Only you as the seller can see this. So your buyers won't be able to see this. It doesn't really matter what you put it as. And as I say, you don't actually have to use it if you don't want to. But for this example, we'll just put product number one in here. For now, I'm just gonna put zero in here. We'll be sorting the quantity later on. And then our price, again, we don't need to worry about it too much at the moment. Once we've actually arranged shipment, we'd set up Amazon's free repricer and that would take care of the actual pricing for us. We'll just put in 29 pounds 03 and then we'll match the buy box just up here for the moment. And then we're gonna put new. And then you'll see two options here, fulfillment channel. So I will ship this item myself, merchant fulfilled or Amazon will dispatch. So we are gonna be doing this one. We're gonna be selecting 
selecting this one, obviously we're gonna be using the Amazon FBA service. Now the rest of this we'll skip for now and we'll click save and finish. Now it's gonna take us to this page, which is just a summary for the product. We can also see some information on the barcode types. We're gonna be using Amazon barcodes on this product. We always recommend to use Amazon's barcodes rather than the barcodes on the product because if you use the barcodes on the product, it's something called co-mingling. This is where Amazon will combine your products with other sellers. So another seller may sell the product, but you'll have yours sent out. And what the risk with that is if the other seller doesn't look after their products as well as you do, then you may end up with some bad stock and you're gonna be the one who has to deal with the return. So we always wanna be using Amazon's barcode. So that's absolutely fine. We're now gonna click list as FBA and send to Amazon. And we're gonna, the next bit will be to actually arrange the shipment. So in this shipment, we're just sending one product, but it works more or less the same, whether you're sending in multiple products at once, this is where you'll be able to actually tell Amazon what you are sending in, how many you're sending in and so on. So we're just gonna tick this one just here. And we'll see a couple of boxes come up just here. So select prep category, cause it's just a toy. It's already prepped. We're gonna click no prep needed, but you'll see a number of different options depending on the types of products you're sending in. So baby products, clothing, fragile things, they all need different prep. But most of the products you're sending in are gonna be no prep needed. So we'll click save just there. So now we've selected this, we're gonna be telling Amazon how many units we're sending in. So we've bought 15 of these. We're gonna put 15 in here. We can also print the SKU label now I personally prefer to do that at the end once we put our number of units in here we can click ready to pack there is some other information just here which we can actually ignore for the moment you'll see some information on the prep no prep is required in this product just because it's already prepped it's just a toy but you will come across quite a few different options as you become more experienced on Amazon so Different products do need different preparations. So your thing like liquids, fragile items, baby products, and so on. So that is where you decide that in here. And you can also download your SKU labels. So your Amazon barcodes, and then you can print them. But I'll be doing that later on. So once we've done that, we're gonna click ready to pack. And again, if you do wanna print your SKU labels, you can do that just here, but we'll click pack individual units. So next up, we need to tell Amazon how many boxes these are gonna fit into. So we've got two options here. We've got everything will fit into one box or we've got multiple boxes will be needed. So for us, it's everything will fit into one box. It'd be that one. If it's multiple boxes will be needed, it's still really easy. I'll just show you quickly. You get a nice web form you can use. So if it was three boxes, you do that. And then you can just put in your different boxes here. If they're different sizes, you can fill in the dimensions, the weight and so on. So our box is 50 by 50 by 50 for these products. And our weight is about five kilograms. So once we've done that, we're gonna click confirm packaging information, click confirm and continue. And now we're gonna be taking on to step two, which is just to confirm the shipping. So this doesn't really matter too much, but we'll just put in today's date for the delivery. Now, always recommend to use Amazon's partnered shipping, which is UPS. If you are a new seller, you may have an offer on like we do on this account, but Amazon's partnered shipping is very, very reasonable. It's not expensive at all. It doesn't really eat into profit margins too much, but obviously we always recommend to allow for your shipping because it is another fee you do need to consider. So we can see where this shipment is going. So this one is going to the warehouse in Doncaster in the UK. Obviously, if you're in the UK, the US and Canada, it will all be pre-decided for you. So Amazon is gonna decide what warehouse it will go to. It will usually get sent to a central center and then it will go off to wherever Amazon deems the products the best suited. So we're all happy with this. We're now gonna accept the charges and confirm the shipping. Now we need to print off our UPS label. So we'll just click print. Here are our labels, which will go on the outside of the box ready for shipment into Amazon. Now, once we've printed off these labels and we've also printed off the barcodes and put them on the products, we can either drop the parcel off to UPS or we can arrange a free collection with UPS. So when you use this service, collection is totally free. So I'll just show you how we actually do this. So we head over to the schedule a parcel collection page and on your Amazon page or even on the label, you'll see the tracking ID just here. Simply head over to this page, you can enter it into here, fill out all your details and as I say you can arrange a free collection into Amazon's warehouse. So applying for VAT exemption is a real game changer for Amazon. It means you can stop paying VAT on Amazon's fees. So it is a little bit naughty, but Amazon will be charging you VAT on their fees, even though they shouldn't be. So you can actually save 20% on all of your fees. This is obviously only if you're a UK customer. It helps massively towards your profitability. There's a few things you need to do. First thing you're gonna need is a letter of incorporation from HMRC. And this is just a letter from HMRC, more or less saying the day 
you started trading. You can get this just by contacting HMRC. It doesn't take long for them to send it through. And once you've got this, you're gonna to need to send it off to Amazon. So on the screen now, you'll see a link, but we'll put the link in the description as well. You're gonna to have to put it on here. You're also gonna to have to send Amazon a message which reads just like this. Again, we'll put a link to this in the description. Hi, I am a UK resident operating as a private limited company selling in the UK marketplace. Our company name is, and I have attached a copy of our certificate of incorporation. Our business annual turnover is less than 85,000 and therefore we are not VAT registered and do not have a VAT number. From my understanding, our business should not be charged VAT on any Amazon seller fees. Therefore, I'd like to register our business as VAT exempt on Amazon. And you don't have to copy that one exactly. You can change it around as you need. Once you get that sent off, you should hear back from Amazon where you're then VAT exempt. It means you can save some really good money on your Amazon fees. And of course, that is all extra profit. So we're now gonna be talking about how you can get ungated in different brands and categories. Getting ungated is such an important aspect about Amazon FBA. It really can transform your business. Unfortunately, when you do first start, you are gonna be restricted in a lot of brands, a lot of categories, a lot of them you won't be able to sell, which does make it hard. You're gonna find great deals and then you realize you can't actually sell them. But there's no need to be alarmed because it's not too difficult to get ungated. It does just take a little bit of time and a little bit of an investment in your business. There's two main types of gating. Now, the most common one is brand gating. That means you are gated for the whole brand. It might be Plainerville, for example. You can also find category gating. This is where the product actually sits within a category, and that category is gated. Getting ungated is the same steps for both, but it obviously depends on the product, which one it sits in. Most of them will be brand gating. So in this section, we're gonna be showing you exactly how to get ungated in brands, specifically Playmobil. So there are a few things you need in order to get ungated. The first thing you must have is an invoice for 10 units for a product in that brand or in that category no older than 180 days. The second thing is that that invoice must include your name and address on it. It must match the address which is on your Amazon seller account. And the final thing is the invoice must include the manufacturer or the supplier of the product. Now on some brands, you may also be asked to actually have a letter from the brand giving you permission to sell their products, but that's mostly on the larger brands. However, most of them, you won't ever have to do this. Now it is important to note, you can't get ungated using a receipt. So you can't use a receipt from a retailer. It must be a proper invoice. You may be able to get ungated from a retailer if they offer invoices, but most of the time it is gonna to need to be from a wholesaler. So the wholesaler we're gonna be using today is this one called Harrison. So this is a UK based wholesaler, but if you are in the US, there's lots of wholesalers as well. So Harrison's is great just because they've got a great range of products, health and beauty, stationery, toys, gifts, charging, sweets and snacks, household products, all sorts of products which you can use to get ungated so we're going to be showing you how to get ungated in the brand Playmobil as I mentioned earlier but it works the same no matter the brand so the first thing we're going to do is we need to actually try and find a product so we found this one here it's a Lego City Wildlife Rescue these are six pounds each now this works the same no matter the brand it's always the same process now if we head over to Amazon, we can see that when we click new, it says apply to sell. So we're just gonna click that and it's gonna take us to this page and we need to request approval. If you are gated in something, it's always worth doing this at the very start because you can sometimes get automatically ungated in a brand or in a category. So you just click request approval and it will say you're ungated. Now for this one, we won't be just because obviously Lego is a large brand, but we can see here what's Amazon asking for. So. As mentioned, we need the invoice dated on or after the 6th of August. It must include our name and address, matching the information on our seller account. It must include the name and address of the manufacturer. It must show the combined purchase of at least 10 units, and you don't need to do this one. And please be aware, we may verify your submitted document by contacting product vendors you identify in your application, which isn't a problem because we're actually buying the products. All we'd actually have to do, we'd have to buy 10 of these. You are actually better trying to find a multi-pack product with already 10 in, just because it is gonna be a bit cheaper. The products you buy to get ungated aren't gonna be massively profitable. 
ideally you'll break even on them, but it's important just to see it as an investment in your business. So once you've got ungated, you can sell absolutely any Lego whatsoever so you can make your profit back really easily. So once you have ordered these products, you're gonna, you're gonna get an invoice from Harrison, but which you'll then need to upload into Amazon. Now it's really important to make it as clear as possible for the Amazon staff. They deal with huge amounts of these every single day. I always recommend just to highlight the points on the invoice. So we'll write on the invoice 10 units of the product name just to make it really clear. Now, if Amazon does reject your first appeal, don't be disheartened. Have a look what you did. The chances are you've missed something or perhaps it's not clear enough. But before you know it, you should get an email from Amazon which says you're now on gated and you can start selling in this brand. So now we've covered almost everything in the course and we've taken you through all the steps of setting up your Amazon seller account, sending your products in and dealing with everything in between. But of course you want to know how can you grow your Amazon FBA business? And there are quite a few different ways and different methods you can use in order to grow your FBA quite easily. Now, the first thing is pretty simple. It's just about buying more stock. A bigger variety of lines you sell from a different range of shops. Increasing amount of stock you're buying as well. So when you're first starting off, you might be buying five, 10, 15 units try and increase that even higher so you're, you're buying even more because a lot of these products you're going to be buying you can only buy them for a set amount of time at that price because they might be a sale item you might have a discount code so you really need to utilize this and back your ability that you've analyzed it correctly and put, put some faith into what you've actually learned on your fba journey now the next thing you can do is branch out into other types of amazon fba so of course in this course we've mostly been talking about arbitrage just because that is the easiest way to get set up there are two very popular methods a lot of people use which is wholesale and private label so wholesale this is where you're buying products in bulk from wholesalers it is very competitive and it is very hard to find good wholesalers but if you do find a good wholesaler the key with wholesale is building relationships with wholesalers the chances are you won't find that many wholesale products just going on a wholesalers website you need to be building relationships a lot of the best products will be coming from a phone call or if you build a relationship the wholesaler is going to call you and be like i've got this line coming in do you want to buy it and that's why building relationships is so important because you get offered things which aren't being offered to other people and then of course with private label this is where you're porting products from typically china using alibaba and having your own brand created now this is absolutely an amazing business model you can build a hugely successful business doing this and this is how most people become millionaires on amazon fba but it is very hard very competitive and it costs a huge amount of money but we would definitely say once you've learned the basics of arbitrage then start to do wholesale and then you can start to look at private label and that is going to be the thing take this just from a side hustle into a true business for you and then on your normal arbitrage selling there's a few other things you can do just to increase what you can sell so of course becoming ungated which i've mentioned before you can look at things like the dangerous goods program so these are products amazon classes dangerous goods so hazmat items and these are items which pose a risk in handling and storage there are extra requirements requirements when dealing with them you need to become a part of a dangerous goods program so a lot of products with like lithium batteries chemicals nail varnish they're all going to fit under this so unless you become a member of the dangerous goods program you won't be able to sell these it's another way of increasing the amount of products you can sell and the more hurdles up against you it means your competition is going to be lower because there's going to be more people who don't want to jump over them hurdles and then you've got things like pan european fba so this is where your products will be stored in amazon's warehouse like normal but you can also sell products into Europe using the FBA service. So this just means you can reach multiple countries and increase your amount of sales. Now do bear in mind this is quite expensive so you can only be doing this on products you've got a really good profit on because obviously it's going to be costing you more money to get your products into Europe because Amazon's costs are going to be higher so you do need to do some checks to make sure it is going to be profitable for you before you do enroll in this we do recommend to turn off pan-european when you do start as you get more experience it's definitely something worth looking at so that is our amazon fba course we really hope you found it helpful and we hope there was lots of information which you didn't know before as we always like to remind people amazon fba is a really tough business but it can be hugely successful the key is putting lots of effort in staying persistent not giving up and don't get in disheartened if you make mistakes because you are going to make a lot of mistakes on your journey and if you have found this video helpful today please do hit that subscribe 
subscribe button and share it with your friends as well. And as always, let us know in the comments your feedback or any other videos you'd like us to make. But thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.